Hello, this is Cuckoo and I'm right here at Superbooth 2023. I've got the absolute pleasure to stand here with Tats from uh, Korg, Korg Berlin, yeah. <laughs> former Korg and now you're a Korg Berlin. Oh, for me, yeah. yeah. So I was in Tokyo for a bit and, um, and now I'm here. Yeah. Um, when did you start Korg Berlin? Korg Berlin started mid 2020, so we're like two and a half years in. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm CEO of Cork Berlin, but I'm also an engineer, so like, I'm pretty deep in the tech as well, yeah. which is cool. I just have some images in my head of you doing great stuff for Cork, then videoing yourself performing on Volkas, and uh, yeah, basically, for me, you're you're Mr. Volka. You made it all happen. Is that entirely inaccurate, or? Uh, I don't know about the Mr. Volker bit, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing those videos. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, like sometimes you engineer a product and you design it and then you just like hand it over to marketing and yeah. then it kind of has its own life. Yeah. But it was cool because like I was the only like proper English speaking person oh, in development. They were like, oh, he can speak English. So that's how I started getting, you know, to do stuff on camera. And but that really opened up a kind of good sensibility about like how we talk about products, what kind of products are good you know, what we show off, uh, what doesn't work, what works. So that really gave me a sense of like, just reference as to like, yeah. what's good out there, what's good for me. Oh shit. Yeah. And how you drop your coffee. <laughs> but you're also an engineer, right? You were deep in, in the development of things. Yeah, yeah, still am. Uh, mainly like schooled in uh, electrical engineering. But uh, these days it's everything. We've got an awesome workshop yeah. in, uh, in Kreuzberg in Berlin. Um, we got like a CNC milling machine, we got laser cutter, we got loads of 3D printers. So the whole idea for the whole team, not just me, is that we're, we're like, we do other stuff that we're not schooled in as well, you know. Uh, some of us are completely self-taught, some of us are like, you know, got a master's in this, that and the other. But we're all like, um, we almost like deliberately step on each other's toes to like, you know, we do whatever it takes to make it happen. and. Uh, that's the cool thing about what we do. Ah, cool. Yeah, I, I recognize that stepping on each other's toes from, uh, yeah, in a good, in a totally good way from when I was uh, working with game development, because being an artist and animator for games, you need to be able to speak to the programmers, and that's like a conversation that I think is really interesting to have. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I mean, things happen on so many different levels, right? So like. Coding is one abstraction of what the product is. Like the industrial design is another. The electrical design, you know, however sorry, even if it's just like the power supply or something, is another abstraction of like what the product is. And we try to just like, just like mash it up, you know. It's fun. <laughs> Did you know from when you started Cork Berlin what you wanted to do already from day one? Because now we have like a blazingly beautiful prototype of something here. That we're yeah. gonna listen to in a bit. So um, we've had. We always try to be, a, you know, very curious and adventurous. You'll see some big speakers in the booth, by the way. Like these are like projects that we do, because we like making things and we try different stuff out all the time. So it's yes, I had um, like, you know, ideas about what we could experiment with, but they were never set in stone. So one of the things was uh, things like. Um, Oh shit, I probably shouldn't say the stuff that we, we don't talk about. Bleep. But the main thing uh, was like, how do, you, how do we create exciting instruments that, are, that feel and sound alive? And more like, I'm always envious of the guitar. It's a kind of reference that I use all the time. It's like, the guitar is so universal. It's so kind of reactive to your kind of emotional state and your playing and your expression. And I'm always like, why can't synthesizers be like that? And we, you know, we're always kind of getting closer and closer. But I was thinking maybe if we have real mechanical or acoustic things that kind of work like in a synthesizer, that would be cool. So that was the kind of level of like, you know, like the, le the definition of the idea that I had at the beginning. And uh, now that we have a team, we've been working on it for like two and a half years now. Two and a half years? Yeah, two and a half years. And, uh, and finally, we can kind of uh, go public with the prototype that we have today at our first ever Superbooth uh, booth. Um, and so we're glad to be here. So, yeah. That's sick. And uh, so we're going to listen to it in a bit. But maybe you could talk about what, what it is, just yeah. briefly. 
Yeah, so so we we've we've kind of I, we haven't really coined this. Should I hold it? Or? Yeah, you can hold okay. it. Yeah. We haven't really coined this term ourselves. I guess it's it's very natural that we call it acoustic synth um, because it is uh, you know it's a marriage of like the the two worlds like acoustic. Uh, sound generation with the kind of synthesis with the kind of control you have with a typical synthesizer so specifically for this prototype and the technology doesn't end here because we've got so many other possibilities but for this prototype we have a metal resonator which is fork shape you'll see it on this one one resonator demo here and it's this geometry because with this geometry it's basically this size yeah it's yeah, a fork yeah. it's stainless spring steel um, and we choose that because it sounds nice and it has, you know, it's got a good character. And the other way we give it character is by designing this geometry. Yeah. So it's forked and by changing the shape and the geometry of it, we can make it have, contain certain frequencies. So a simple arm would, you know, bob up and down when it vibrates. It could also twist. It could also have these smaller waves inside it. So it really acts in a very complex way. And the job of this technology is to actually, um, extract that and use that in a way that's similar to a synthesizer. Mm. So we have very, um, we kind of hit it with a hammer like you would have strings on a piano, yeah. um, but our hammer is electromagnetic. So we have this kind of coil magnet combination. This is actually called the balanced armature scheme. And that basically hits the resonator. And after we hit it, we've got some pickups, the capacitive pickups, it's this kind of like PCB here. Um, this is designed to pick up all the right kind of the right vibrations of the resonator um, and we listen to what the resonator does and like I said the resonator has got a fundamental frequency which gives you the sense of pitch and we got and it's really rich in overtones and what we can do we listen to what the resonator does and we say ah fundamental keep it on sustain it uh, first overtone a uh, little bit more second overtone not so nice uh, off please. So we can control the individual modes um, with a feedback control system. So we can treat those elements like a synthesizer. Or we can say, oh, LFO on this mode, or, you know, we can do all sorts of, you know, or put envelope generate envelopes on each mode separately. So uh, it's really the um, not telling the acoustic system what to do. It's more like listening to it and saying, ah, yeah, we'll have a bit more of that, but less of this. And this is what the system is doing, but really fast in real time. So sound-wise, it sounds like everything you've been talking about is is cl only in the acoustic world, but you kind of uh, enhance it and you tickle it a bit. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So there's, there's a big paradox. So if you have like complete control over what it does, then it's basically a loudspeaker. So we can send it a signal and it will do exactly what you tell it to. And that's really boring. I mean, speakers are great, but as a synth, that's really boring. So, but what we do here is we let the acoustic properties, um, which is very kind of organic and analog, and we try to, yeah, like you say, enhance it and kind of like, you know, and can hone it into the sound that you want. So this is uh, basically our technology and it doesn't end here. So. It, it doesn't have to be these metal resonators. It, we're doing experiments with air, actually. So we, we can have a column of air, we can excite it and enhance it in just the same way uh, as this prototype. Um, it could also be like effects, like reverb. And basically, it's kind of a bit like convolution. So we can even do like plate reverbs. It could be like a plate instead of this metal resonator. And we could even control the parameters of, the, of that plate uh, with this feedback control as well. So it's got loads of potential. We see like multiple uh, product lines coming out of this. So that's why we've been spending like two years trying to get this right. And we've finally got to a stage where we can show it to the public. Yeah. It's still very limited, but it does demonstrate the tonal capabilities. Mind blowing. That's very cool. It sounds, uh, you know, you probably need to try it before you fully uh, can place it into whatever music you might be want to use it for uh, but right now in my head I, I can kind of imagine a clarity a, to a tonal clarity like typically when you um, ignite electromagnetically it's kind of sine tones on if you have like an e bow on the guitar it's very like cl clear but what I hear from from the little van here 
it, it sounds like you can do much more experimental sounds. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think, um, and it's also very alive, right? So if you if you're playing the nose and you hit it, it will ring, right? If you have the release long on on all the notes, it's more like it's like having your foot on the damper pedal in the piano, and you get all these like you hit one note and all the other strings uh, ring at the same time, sympathetic uh, resonances. Um, all that happens because this is actually very acoustic as well. Bring it, take it up to the speaker, crank it up, and you get feedback. You know, it's it's very raw, it's very it's very alive, you know, and it's very responsive to to your kind of expression. I think that makes a good instrument. Cool. And then uh, the the sound that comes out of it, I, I guess. I mean, this is just a prototype, but yeah. it, is the idea that you want to keep the the analog uh, acoustic sound for as long as possible, or do you have to digitize it at some point? Uh, right now, the feedback processing is done in digital because it's just easier to prototype. We could port this to analog as well, like analog circuitry. Um, the other interesting thing is. When you when you turn the volume down and put your ear against it, yeah. it sounds wonderful as well. So I see like you know maybe putting piezos on it, like well, whole variety of ways to kind of turn this into like the output signal that you want. Yeah, like creating little wooden boxes that yeah, transfer the vibrations. Yeah. Mm. Sick. I, I'm psyched to 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 hear it, to listen to it. I think the when I first saw the press photos of this uh, I thought it was small but it's actually a, a little chunky chunky little thing and you can see the full-size USB port there for reference and uh, yeah these are like full-size knobs it's a uh, it's pretty cool it's the opposite of teenage <laughs> yeah it's it's the opposite of no it's not actually I mean yeah, yeah, teenage engineer making super tiny things. But in terms of what you're doing here, I think there's probably a limit to where how much you can downsize acoustic vibrations and still get like a, 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 a useful tone out of it. Yeah, I think size is a really important part of an instrument for many reasons, right? So if you have a bigger resonator, you need more energy. So maybe it doesn't run off batteries, for example. You know, it brings in different constraints. So um, we are kind of thinking about how we can make this smaller as well. Uh, and it can be made smaller. Uh, I, we don't know how much, um, and we could also make it bigger as well. If you we want like an 88 keyboard, like super big sounding yeah. thing, we just make a big thing, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you want to sound big, make it big. Uh, and uh, but it has potential for both. Yeah. I feel like what's uh, this is the embryo of a whole new uh, era of uh, possibilities. Like when I see this, just visually. I think about Wurlitzer and uh, those types of, of electro, what do you call them? Electro ma mallet pianos? I think they're, they're electric pianos, like the electric guitar. So that's that's the kind of distinction there, yeah. which is that like, the electric guitar, the electric piano, they're, they're basically acoustic systems with pickups on them, right? But this is like, this is, sure, we have that, but we have this whole system where we kind of listen to what it does and the system reacts to it. Yeah. And you can control the system in a way like a synthesizer. Yeah. So that's really exciting for us. And hopefully it's a new paradigm in, yeah. in electro acoustic, acoustic synthesis. Yeah. Do you find it messy to work with or, or have you come to a place now where everything is kind of stable for you? Uh, it's been very messy. Yeah. We're at a point where it is stable. That's why we're here today, actually, because <laughs> we're going to stay with it last. Oh, what do you mean, like technically? No, I mean like sound-wise and tone-wise. Like acoustically, is it reacting too much to to the environment or tracking the the pitch, uh, like analyzing the the pitch and everything that happens? Is it? Do you have to work? Is it a lot of noise that you need to kind of? Uh, yeah, filter out. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, is it like too too crazy or like yeah? Um, so, in that sense, it can be. It can be. But it is like in this demonstration we have today, it's it's pretty like controllable. Otherwise, we can't demonstrate it. Um, but it, you can take it to like really kind of. I, I don't know if it's messy, but more kind of 
extreme uh, territory. For example, you can put your finger on the resonator while playing it, and then it becomes more percussive, and you can even like change the tuning a bit depending on how you touch it. So it does have this kind of physicality with it, and that always allows for crazy stuff to happen, and it can get messy, which is kind of the fun of it as well. How fast are these electromagnetic ma uh, what do you call them? Uh, impulse. The drivers. the drivers. Are they fast enough to kind of emulate any type of texture? Are they fast enough to emulate a bow? Yeah, yeah, uh, totally. So we've got one mode where we kind of like re-trigger the the initial kind of hit, um, and that can go. I mean, this goes up to audio rate. You can drive these at twenty k if you wanted to. You won't hear anything because it's too fast. But um, but that could basically like. I illustrate the sound of a, a, a rock being being kind of striking the, the rods. Yes, for example, yeah. So actually the, the driving signal can be anything. So you could even play like music into it and drive the resonator. This is what I was saying about like how this could be like a, an effects thing because it is, it is convolution. So you're convolving like an, an incoming signal with a mechanical system and you're kind of, you're multiplying the characteristics of of both together. Um, so, for instance, if this was like a, if this had a little keyboard and it had a, a sample memory, and then you played like a sampler sounds uh, to to this oh, acoustic, sa true. yeah, and uh, and then just select another sample, and then you have a a very different kind of sound, or maybe a granular synthesizer into them, and yeah, I, I'm uh, yeah. I'm vibing with this. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's is it may make it it maybe makes it a little bit hard for us because it does have a very kind of wide range of possibilities. So, you know, you could see this as like an instrument in an instrument in its own right, or you could see it as like, you know, a, a section. It could be to even be like the the VCO section in a in a more conventional subtractive synth, for example, or combined with a granular synth, like you say. That sounds really exciting. Um, well, I don't know. The sky's the limit. <laughs> well, in terms of like release window for this, do you have like a, f a first product in mind? Is it is this like a prototype of what to expect as the first product? Uh, no, I don't think our first product would be looking like this. Or it could do. Well, honest answer, we don't know. Right, so so the whole point. Or maybe they do, but they won't tell me. No, no, no. Seriously, honestly, I'm t like, <laughs> uh, we we actually don't know. We have like ideas of maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. But the whole thing about instruments is that we kind of like to be in touch with the community, yeah. and that's why we're out here today at this very early stage. This isn't something that we typically do as you know, as Korg. Is like, yeah, we've got something going. Uh, it's very limited still. It's very early days. But um, we want to kind of talk about what it could yeah. be. Yeah. You know, we want to know like what what people are excited about when they try it, um, or they might be disappointed by it. You know, we want to know these things and interact with the people so that you know we can we can put out a product that really means something to to many people, hopefully. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and I've uh, always had a, a great belief in you. So when when I heard about you starting called Berlin I felt like this is going to be the start of something epic and uh, yeah just uh, it's an honor to be here to speak with you today so I'm really happy really appreciate it thank you so now uh, I think we're gonna have a listen to it yep cool hi so very welcome to our Bavagen. Uh this is what we've developed at Korg Berlin and we call it uh, an acoustic synthesizer so in this instrument, uh, the sound that you'll hear is generated entirely by the movement of these two-pronged steel resonators here. Um, so the steel resonators move at different frequencies. We pick them up using this plate here, which you can see the underside of here. So you can imagine these plates are on the underside uh, of this pickup. So um, this pickup is cap capacitive, and that's how we listen to the position of the resonator. And what you're hearing through these speakers is just the pickup signal directly fed to the speakers. How do we get the resonator to move in the first place? Um, unlike other similar-ish instruments like kalimbas or electric pianos, where you strike the resonator with a hammer or maybe with a finger, 
Uh, in this case, we drive the resonators electromagnetically. So these resonators are sitting between two magnets, and they've got a coil wrapped around them, which means when we put current through these coils, we can get the resonator to move without physically touching it, although we can also <laughs> physically strike them ourselves. Um, yeah, so every time we press a key in this mode, which we call acoustic mode, we put a pulse of current through these coils, through the relevant resonator for the note that you're pressing, uh, and that causes the resonator to move and then die off as it wishes. Um, so we get the natural sound of the resonator being hit once with a coil, and then we hear the sound fade away. So that's kind of why we call it an acoustic instrument, in part, is because we're exciting something physical, it's moving, and then we're listening to the movements of the physical body. Where the synth side of things comes in is if we switch this switch here, which is a synth mode, we, can, we have a feedback system which listens to the signal at this pickup, and it feeds back energy into the driving coil in order to keep the resonator moving forever if we wanted to. So we, we strike the resonator with a pulse of energy, the resonator starts moving, and then through feedback we listen to the movements of the resonator and we keep the resonator moving for as long as we like. So in this case it sounds like this. We're now pressing the res... We're, we're putting a pulse of current into the coil and the feedback is causing the, coil, the resonator to keep moving in response to the feedback that's coming through the coil. So in this case we're just listening to the fundamental frequency of the resonator and we're feeding that back in order to get the sound to go on for as long as the user is pressing the note. Um, what we can also do is we can feed back some of the higher overtones that are present in the resonator. So the resonator has one favorite mode of movement, which is its, its lowest fundamental frequency. That's the one that you're hearing now. But we can also specifically target the higher, stranger, more metallic modes with this overtones knob. So as we turn this knob up, sorry, please, thank you. We start to dial up the feedback in the higher orders of resonances. And that's where you're hearing these higher, more metallic sounds. So we can also modulate the amount of the feedback that's coming back on these overtones. So if we dial up the, this depth knob here, which is controlling an LFO, and um, we can press a note, and we can hear the feedback is being modulated by a low frequency oscillator at a rate and a depth determined by the position of these knobs. So as we move this rate knob around, you hear these higher metallic sounds are changing much quicker. As we move it down, we get slower, slightly creepier metallic sounds. designed them in such a way that they have nice frequencies that they vibrate at and we've made a whole series of, of volumes of flip books that demonstrate how they how they move I don't know if you see it on camera properly but so this is the fundamental simple bobbing up and down can you see it yeah and uh, and if we control up to five modes right including the fundamental this is the third overtone it's one of my favorites it really twists and contours, and it's these complex movements that that really create the richness of the of the tone. And again, we don't tell it to do that. We just listen in, and we give it a bit of encouragement to do something that's more in the realm of like synthesis control. So we're really merging the two worlds together with this. 
sorry for butting in. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, other features, I guess, I can run you through quickly. We have this, what we call a retrigger mode, which much like acoustic mode, where we're hitting one pulse per note press, we can keep hitting it with more pulses after the note's been pressed. So, and we can control the rate at which that happens with this LFO that we saw earlier. So, you can hear this very slow ticking sound that we can dial up the rate at which we're bombarding new pulses at the resonator at. In order, so the user can kind of find their own resonances in the resonator, kind of cuts out all of the clever feedback stuff, and you just get this kind of naive way of finding your way around the resonator, resonator's frequencies. Um, so that's cool too. And then, because it's Super Booth, uh, it has MIDI as well. So we can play uh, sequences, sequenced by this Korg SQ64, and we can play MIDI notes, which get triggered, resu resulting as before in the movements of these resonators. Um, in this sequence, uh, scenario, this release knob becomes interesting because this release knob determines how long we can hear the note after we're done uh, processing it. So if the release goes up, we can start to hear the kind of natural trailing off of the of the resonator's movements. It sounds almost reverby, although we're just listening to a totally dry signal. And if we want a more tightly controlled synthesizer style sequence, we can dial this back a little bit and we start to get into more uh, controlled chunks of, of sound. It's extremely responsive. I was thinking that might, I, I'd be open for the idea that there might be some lag because it's so physical and everything, but it's extremely low latency, uh, instant, in instantaneous. Nice. Yeah, potentially it's, it's, it should be faster than, I mean, right now, if there there is like a slight la latency, but that's more from like button push to hammer hit, our kind of metaphorical hammer hit. Um, and after that, there is zero latency. So potentially you can have like very, very reactive, uh, like very short latencies that match acoustic instruments. Well, you're thinking about tuning, the tuning situation. Is there going to be like tuning knobs for a, a system like this? Or does it have to be in tune and uh, then you need to file it down if you want to retune? Yeah, so I think the, the mechanical scheme for like how we hold these resonators isn't quite finalized yet. At the moment for this prototype, we do have to pre-tune them. So we, we use a very uh, precise uh, water jet cutting uh, method. It goes down to about 20 microns. Uh, to really kind of get the the shape uh, exactly right, um, and we have like predetermined frequencies, like we saw in the overtones. We can control these frequencies by adjusting the geometry. So these are all kind of like set in the physical kind of body that's vibrating. Um, there is, however, possibility for some kind of modification to that. So dynamic modification. So, for example, when you heard me like with my finger, just holding one end of the, of the fork changes the pitch and makes it go higher. So it is very much conceivable that we have like a mechanical system where something physically moves and changes the pitch. And that's really exciting. That's really kind of um, really the potential of this because you can kind of interact with it in physical ways. If you created a, a, a kind of reverb based on this technology, that would be a good place to have this movable adjustments to change the reverb time and yeah tune yeah absolutely so i mean i don't know that i mean we love having these conversations here and that, that's the whole point of us coming out very early with this although it's not really a product at all um is that we can have these conversations and you know start our minds kind of thinking about yeah what would actually be interesting because actually the possibilities are really really infinite and we need to zone in to to find the perfect products to put out in the future yeah, very cool. I'm excited for the future of this uh, project. And I'm uh, from the top of my head, I think as it is now, it sounds beautiful. And it definitely has a, a, a sound, a different sound to offer. 
a, a sound that is not very common in electronic music today. It's like reviving old roads. Uh, it's kind of maybe the closest I can get. But yeah, very exciting. I think it needs to have a, a wide palette if there was a, 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 like a, a product that came into fruition. Uh, a wide palette of taking it into different directions. And I was alluding to samples and like as one way of, of kind of modifying the, the drivers a little bit so they have more higher frequency, yeah, more varied kind of way. Yeah, yeah it's exciting, exciting, no pun intended. Let's ex oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think we'll just wrap it up right here. Is there anything else you want to? I mean, everyone in every comment on every video will ask when. That's going to be the biggest question. Uh, is there anything you, is it like, well, within this year, we might have decided on our first product? Or is it like, we don't know. We'll see. Yeah, no, we, we're really eager. Like, we don't want to be, um, you know, like this crazy lab that does like crazy experiments. Uh, we do actually want to have, you know, we want want to make a positive impact to, you know, culture and society and all that. That's why we make instruments. Uh, so it's really important for us to put something out, you know, that people can buy and use and, and you know, put into their music. And, you know, that's really important to us. So by no means are we intending to be like, OK, we've done some fun experiments. That's it. We do want to put products out. Uh, honest answer. We don't know when that's going to be. Uh, we, it needs to be right, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it right. We just don't know how long that's gonna take. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. In my ears, to my ears, it it could fit into many many places. It could be an uh, a legendary new keyboard instrument that just sounds wonderful, and uh, every indie indie band in the world will have it because it sounds so beautiful. It could be experimental. It could be a sick sample device that has. A totally wacky experience, yeah. So I, I see the dilemma of not really knowing <laughs> exactly. I mean, in the end, you need to probably get some some musical instruments out for people to buy, and uh, it's going to take a good year of development for just that one instrument, and then it's the next one. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> Me too. Us too. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, this is um, cool. Berlin. Check them out. <laughs>